Okay, so let me, the quick plan is give an introduction to the fundamental gap. Then we both talk about convex domain in the Euclidean and the sphere case. Then we talk about the story in the uh, hyperbolic case uh, for convex and the horror convex domain. Then maybe uh, just the idea of the proof. Okay. <clears throat> So fundamental gap is about the eigenvalue of Laplacian. We know for any uh, bounded domain manifold, uh, the eigenvalue are defined given by the eigen equations. <clears throat> uh, we have this negative sign so that the eigenvalue are uh, greater or equal to zero. So the Laplacian here is, is a, just as a second derivative. So the typical, there's Dirichlet and the Newman boundary conditions and the first one, it's so-called simple. So the uh, first uh, eigenvalues, those are the, in the Newman case, it's always equal to zero. Uh, in the Dirichlet case, it's a positive. That is a difference. So there's many works in studying eigenvalue, both from interest from math and physics. So from the variation point of view, this is a thing of the conference. It's, yeah, my neighbor's dog. Uh, the eigenvalue can be characterized as the main max principle, namely the case eigenvalue is if you take a k subspace, k dimensional subspace, look at the ready quotient, uh, take the maximum among this k subspace, then take infimum among all the k dimensional space. So that gives a characterization. In particularly, the first one is just infimum of all the functions. And the second one you can think about is in FIMO about all the functions which are perpendicular to the first one. Okay, so, and go on. So we would like to give up and the lower bounds uh, for the, you know, eigenvalues. Intuitively, if you want to get an upper bound, so to give upper bound, all we need is some good test functions. You plug in, you, uh, but in order to get a lower bound, you need uh, an estimate which works for all the functions. Okay, so there is. So the uh, folks, when we refer to the fundamental gap, it's just a refer to the difference of the first two eigenvalues. Since the first eigen uh, eigenvalue is simple, so it's always positive. But in the Newman case, it's simpler because first one is zero. So it's really just the first non-zero eigenvalues. So it's uh, much well studied in this case. So this, uh, there's lots of interest in this. You can also consider the general Turing operators yeah, in physics <clears throat> as they represent the, uh, the energy level of in quantum physics. So very simple computation we can do if you look at the most of them we cannot compute explicitly, just one dimensional interval. And one can compute that in the Dirichlet case, the gap is three pi squared over d squared, d is a length. And the Newman case is just a pi over d squared. Right. Okay, so this will be our maybe associate uh, the models. So then the question is, you're trying to get some optimal lower and upper bound for the gap of more general domains. And in general, uh, depends on the low and up, we want uh, convex domains. <laughs> so let's start with uh, uh, the Euclidean case case. So that's referred to the called fundamental gap conjecture. For any convex domain, you consider the Schrodinger operator with a potential. The potential V is uh, uh, in general to be assumed to be convex. So with the Dirichlet boundary condition, the conjecture is saying that for any domain, convex domain, <clears throat> so here it's important. If it's not convex, it does not have any, uh, the lower bound goes to zero. For any convex domain, the gap is big or equal to three pi squared over d squared, which was the uh, number we saw for interval uh, with length equal to. So this, uh, this is optimal because when you take the domain, uh, a domain which a very thin strip, then it approaches, this is a length equal to D. This uh, you can compute uh, the rectangular strip, it approach to three pi square over D square. So this uh, uh, number is the best possible. So this was uh, independently conjectured by Van Book, his physicist, Ashford, Banguri, and Yao in the 80s. So in the 80s, there were lots of work uh, in the beginning 
but this was uh, only finally solved by Ben Angel and Julie Clarkbook in 2011. They introduced this uh, uh, method, what is kind of so-called two-point maximum principle and work on heat equations and completely solved the uh, conjecture, showing that for all convex domain with convex potential, it's always the gap big than three pi square over d square. Okay. So there's only works, uh, but they were never able to get the optimal estimate. Only other than one dimensional, which was done in 1994. <clears throat> so once it's done in the uh, Euclidean space, so then it's natural to ask what about a sphere, the next uh, space, the simplest space uh, possible. So in this uh, uh, case, that's where work uh, come in. So in, I will not state the precise result. This in, in a separate three joint work, uh, we show one, first one, we showed that uh, uh, when the diameter, so there's diameter restrictions. If the diameter is less than pi over two, dimension big or equal to three, then the same gap estimate hold. It's a strict inequality in this case. Then with her, we uh, restrict the diameter restrictions, but uh, uh, for some, the reason because of the model difference, there's difference between dimension two and or big or equal to three. So finally we uh, did for all dimensions showed that same gap hold it's big than three pi square over d square. Okay. Mm. So that's for convex domain in the sphere. Okay, that's uh, uh, just a one uh, quick idea about the proof. I will not able to uh, present it Actually, we said the Newman case is kind of simpler. So the first step actually go back to 80s in single one and yao yao is try to reduce the Newman uh, case. Then they, by looking at the quotient of second eigenfunction by the first eigenfunction. So first eigenfunction, another thing is that does not change a sign. So this is what you can choose to be positive in the domain, except the boundary. The boundary both vanishes and still well-defined. So that this function actually satisfies this uh, uh, Laplace equation, except there's a weight. <clears throat> so, and as a gap comes in naturally, and this is satisfies a Newman boundary condition. So we can see this uh, uh, log of the first function comes in log concavity. So this is like a, a weighted Laplacian. So if we able to come estimate this, you kind of get a hold on the gap. So the key step is so-called prove the log, super log concavity of first eigenfunction. As we see in the equation, this is a, a log of the equa a log of the first function comes in. <clears throat> so I will not state the exactly what is log super log concavity first eigenfunction. function. I just to say that implies implies that. Uh, so we uh, we take the log. As concave day, so we take the hashing of the function, it's uh, uh, going to be log concave. So less or equal to, you take a model, less or equal to hashing of some model, you can uh, come up from the space, which is uh, uh, in the model case for the hashing you can compute, it's just equal to the first, the model of the first eigenvalue, which is strictly less than zero, right? Well, lambda one, R is positive. So earlier, maybe actually in the uh, Bransk Leapers uh, work, they showed that the hashing of this in the Euclidean case, the hashing of the log is less or equal to zero. So the soup we simply quote that it's not just less or equal to zero, but less or equal to some negative thing. So this is uh, even more log concave in this case. So there's a, a model to work on it. <clears throat> Once you have this, uh, uh, you prove that this log concavity, then you can derive a so-called, I call the gap comparison, showing that the gap of the domain will be big or equal to the gap of the model. This is a bar, everything is a model, and you can estimate the models, uh, the gap of the model show that is big than three pi squared p squared, and that finishes the proof. So among these, uh, this second step is a key step 
is um, the main work which is uh, involved. So especially when uh, in the sphere case, namely this uh, uh, proof is very long. Actually, I ask my student read his kind of throwing off that eight pages of the proof in the, so um, uh, yeah, I'll even hesitate to state precisely, but the idea is still the uh, two point maximal principle using uh, variation. So that is a story for the uh, sphere and it's a quick story for about Euclidean and the sphere case. Any questions? Uh, okay, very good. There are several ways we can think about either if a smooth case, you can, the second fundamental form is positive of the boundary. Or same thing is that you have a domain uh, that all the geodesic connecting two point lies in the domain, just like it's in the RN case. So that can be defined for any, any set in a manifold. You think these are convex. If any two points, the geodesic, the minimal geodesic connecting them lies in the set. Okay, so then a uh, typical example, I guess for the sphere in the bulk, in the sphere, if we have a small ball, yeah, then yes, these are convex. But if the ball is going down, it's a bigger ball, then they are not convex because minimal geodesic from here will be lies in, in the other side, not in the in this ball. But so any ball inside. So uh, to get a lower bound, uh, yeah, the convex condition is necessary. Otherwise, uh, the gap usually go to zero. You can find a domain, right? Just like here, you can take this bigger and bigger, the gap will go to zero. <laughs> So that can be defined for, yeah, that's good because we're going to use convex all the time. That can be defined for any manifold. Okay. So now, uh, so once you have that, it's actually usually this, uh, if it works for the Euclidean and the sphere, then naturally ask about hyperbolic space. So hyperbolic space, Okay, we said this log concavity is important, but there are already example by Xi showing that the first icon function is not log concave. So this, uh, so uh, naturally, then one would expect maybe the exact estimate may not be hold, <laughs> but at the time, which something still hold. And there's a, okay, so those was the lower bound. There's some work on upper bound uh, showing some gap estimate, which uh, already, which works for uh, actually also for space with constant curvature. The upper bound, you don't need to assume convex. So any bounded domain. Okay, so here is stating for the hyperbolic space, similar versions already done in the uh, Euclidean and the sphere earlier. So that's usually the case. Xian done Euclidean, then sphere, then hyperbolic space. Showing that if any domain, then there you take a ball in the same space, such as that the first eigenvalue of the ball is the same as a, as is a uh, domain. Then you can compare the second eigenvalue will be smaller than the ball. So therefore the gap is smaller. So this is a natural uh, upper bound estimate of the ball. Basically, if you compare to the ball with the same first eigenvalue then second, second eigenvalue as a comparison. So for Rn, this is uh, uh, referred to this PPPW conjecture, right? It's just related to the ratio of the two eigenvalues. It's just, I'm rephrasing it differently here. Mm. So upper bound, yeah, there's already a very good upper bound, which is uh, also done each of the case. So the lower bound, so as we said, that's we started, maybe we said, okay, in the, it may not be work for the hyperbolic space. And that's in the uh, first case, yeah, in the beginning, we did uh, based on using the she motivated from she's uh, example, we started as a gap in the hyperbolic plane and find a convex domain, such as the gap 
is smaller than three pi square over d square. Okay. So, but we still show in she's example, it still have some lower bound, which is uh, like three pi square over two d square. Okay. So there's a, so at this time we said, okay, maybe, maybe it's the same bond is not true, but maybe there's still some lower bond. <clears throat> but very surprising, at least when we got it, is that we showed that actually there's no lower bond at all. Namely, is a gap for any diameter. So any diameter and any epsilon arbitrarily small, we can find a convex domain in the hyperbolic space. So here convex is the same. Either if it's a smooth, you can think the second fundamental of the boundary is the uh, positive definite, or exactly the, all the geodesics in the domain lies in the domain. In this case, showed that the gap can be smaller than any epsilon here. So literally, there is no, uh, no lower bound at all. Yes. And uh, in the beginning, this actually was a little bit counterintuitive. I was thought when the diameter D is very small, right? Any manifold, when it's small, it should look like Euclidean, but uh, that's uh, in the, the geometry, so that it's the coded that is still in the, it's, it's very, very small. <clears throat> so that's the uh, first uh, result about convex domain in hyperbolic space. Then after we uh, worked on, you know, thought about more, usually, People saying that in hyperbolic space, maybe convex is not usually strong enough. You want to be more stronger convex version, so-called hollow convex. <clears throat> so what is a hollow convex? So then, uh, so this was uh, with a uh, uh, group, the whole group, which is started in a workshop, Women in Geometry uh, workshop. And then uh, with Alina Hein, three of us continued showing that even for hollow convex domain. So what is hollow convex? It's a strong, more stronger convex, right? We said a convex state just means the second fundamental form or uh, uh, the principal curvature is greater or equal to zero. And a hollow convex is saying that principal curvature actually greater or equal to one. <clears throat> So instead of greater or equal to zero, it's greater or equal to one. Or another way is, is uh, all the geodesic with the geodesic, not geodesic, all the curve with the geodesic curvature equal to one completely lies on the set. So this hollow convex, all we want to say is a stronger convex condition in the uh, hyperbolic space. And also it's one of the natural convex condition in the hyperbolic space. So even for hollow convex domain, we can show that for D a little bit big, the diameter a little bit big, the, um, the thing is, okay, so this gap actually, when it can be less than D to the cube power, okay? Therefore, if you multiply by diameter square, it still goes to zero when D go to infinite, okay? So on the other hand, we expect it has some kind of low bound, but the lower bound is not like the before, it's always one over something over D square, it's not in that format. Okay. So even uh, an example of hollow convex domain is the balls in the hyperbolic space, which will indicate in the proof. Yeah, now any questions in the statement? So in general is saying that the um, gap as in, in the hyperbolic space, in some sense, it felt as much as you would think it does not have any, yeah. Okay, now the uh, idea of just to uh, indicate. So the convex domain we choose in this part actually can indicate that you just uh, in the, each in the hyperbolic space, think a thin strip in this case. Uh, in hyperbolic geometry, so you took uh, the uh, angle is from negative L to L and uh, the radius we parameter with this, uh, <coughs> so that this is from zero, one, okay, it's from one to some number and we take it a very, very thin. 
Okay, so one thing is you can see that uh, indicate why hyperbolic is different. If you look at the distance, the distance of ut, actually it's usually it's much smaller pq. And on the other hand, sp is equal to rq. So if you look at the Euclidean, think about Euclidean distance, this strip, it's more like a dumbbell. It's in the middle, it's smaller the distance. And, and in the Euclidean, uh, we, one knows that if the dumbbell, the gap could be go to smaller and smaller. So this part is actually a very small compared to the outside view. Okay. Oh, now we need to make this uh, uh, more computation. So because of this domain is really nice, it's in some sense, it's like a square. So you can do separation variable to compute <coughs> the eigenvalues and showing that uh, the first eigenvalue, okay, it's just this, if once you do this separation, the first equation you can solve then explicitly find the eigenvalues, the uh, sigma, the second equation, therefore, then it will be plugging here and we looking for lambda, the eigenvalues, it will be uh, smaller than what you've, Depends on sigma, you want the smallest is a mu. If you take the all the four mu, the smallest. So then we can gap, it's reduced the gap of this second equation, which is uh, just a, a ODE. Okay. And show, we will show this basically takes the sigma to be mu, which is uh, uh, the parameter we had. Mu is the, uh, the domain parameter. So this completely reduced the uh, ODE problem. <clears throat> and then we are doing upper bound. We said upper bound, we can do it by uh, actually value quotient estimate. So maybe fine. In the uh, case, the key is showing that first IC function actually looks like shape like the following. And uh, uh, then you can use value quotient to test the function when it is a uh, odd function put in this and uh, uh, then the, you compute uh, precisely all the, and show that this, it does all the turn goes to zero and to look at. Okay, I think I'll, yeah, stop here. Oh, okay. I have uh, uh, about the hollow convex, basically we reduced the estimate to the balls and the ball is uh, uh, really um, also redu reduced to ODEs. <clears throat> Then we show uh, use a result. Actually, we discussed, but after we also find ourselves is that hollow convex domains, basically when the R is big, it looks like a ball. Namely the inner radius and the outer radius of the balls are very close. So then we can use the balls to estimate the hollow convex domain. Thank you.